given a data like this say. So we'll be interested to see that. And we'll see, oh, where Tamil Nadu is. So it's in the fourth place. So we'll enjoy seeing the data. So that's why we go for graphs. So what is a graph? Graph is nothing but presenting the data in a visual format. And it is very, very important for the data analyst. Simply having the data and analyzing is not enough. We have to, it should be in a presentable way. It should be appealing and it should be easier for others to understand. And we should get obtain some information that is hidden. That's why we go for graphs. And now we'll have the introduction to plotting. So when we work with plotting, we'll be concentrating only on two windows. So one is the editor window and the other one is the plot window. Already we have seen this is the editor window and this is the plot window. Suppose if you didn't get the plot here, just see whether any error message is displayed in the console. So first, let us see about the plot function. So uh, the most you widely used plotting function in our programming is plot function. And it is a generic function. Generic means so when you uh, give different types of arguments based on that, you'll be able to get different plots. And here, this is the syntax of plot. Plot takes some more arguments too. I've given only the important arguments that we'll be using often. X, Y type, main, X lab, Y lab, and PCH. So let us see what does it mean. So first one is X. So the X values and another one Y values. Type refers to the type of the plot you would like to generate. Whether it should be uh, having points in the plot or you should have lines in the plot, or it should be a histogram like thing, or you should have a steps like thing in the plot. Next, if you'd like to have a get a main title, that should be given in the main parameter. And next, if you'd like to get the labels for x axis or the y axis, then you should give it an x lab and y lab. And finally, if you'd like to get different type of plot characters, then you have to give the values from 0 to 25 in PCH. Now let me plot with a single, with a simple values. So let me take set of Fibonacci values. So I'm going to generate a vector. So uh, in the first, second session, we have seen how to generate a vector using C. So C of set of Fibonacci values. So when you assign this to Fibo, so Fibo is a vector now. And when I plot this Fibo, so already you know, plot, it needs two arguments, x value and y value. Here I am giving only one argument. So how does it plot then? So you can consider index value as one and the other FIBO vector as the other one. So index value will be plotted in the x-axis and the vector FIBO will be plotted in the y-axis. So this is a sample plot that we are getting. So we'll see about the types in detail. Before that, in the plot window, when you see the plot window, you'll have the various option. So if you'd like to go to the previous plot, click this button. Next plot, click this. Or if you'd like to zoom, when you click this, this plot will be displayed in a separate window. Next, if you would like to save the image in a separate file, that can be done by clicking the save as image. Or you can save as PDF, or even you can copy to the clipboard too. And finally, if you'd like to clean, you can make use of this tool. So these are all the file formats in which you can store your plot. PNG, JPG, TIFF, BMP, so on. Now let us see about the standard graphs available in R. So these are the standard graphs available in R. Line chart, pie chart, bar plot, plot, box plot, and histogram. And we'll be using them a lot when we analyze and present the data. First, let us start with scatter plot. Scatter plot is also called as XY plot because it shows the relationship between two sets of data. So already we have plotted the Fibonacci. So that was a scatter plot because R considers or plot function considers scatter plot as the default uh, plot. So if you didn't mention about any type of plot, it will simply plot the scatter plot. Now, let us see this example. I'm creating a sequence with these arguments. So the initial value should be minus pi. Pi is a constant. So minus pi, that refers to minus 3.14. Pi value 3.14. 
it should be incremented by 0 0.1. Now I'm plotting this x value with the corresponding sine x value. So this is the output that I'll be getting because I didn't mention about any type of plot. So if I did mention about any type of plot, by default, R considers it as scatter plot and it will mark it up here because the default type is P. And here, see, X will be marked in the X axis and the second argument, sine X, will be marked in the Y axis. It will be plotted like this then. So by default, the type uh, of the representation should also be point. That's why we have the type of speed. So uh, you won't be getting any line or anything. Simply it will be like points here and there. Okay, this is how we'll get in the scatter plot. Now, in the same plot, if I would like to give the labels and the heading, so that is you would like to add titles and you would like to add labels. So what should we do? So now I'm creating two different vectors. The first vector is height vector and the second vector is uh, weight vector. Now I'm plotting height versus weight. I would like to get this height in the x-axis and weight in the y-axis. So how I'm plotting? So if for the plot function, I should give height as the first argument, that is x-axis value, then weight, then this, this attribute, that is the parameter main, will be uh, getting the title of the plot to be displayed. And that should be given within double quotes. So here I'm giving the title of the plot comma, a label for the x-axis and label for the y-axis. Suppose if I give and when I execute the code, so how to execute the code, just select this code and you'll get run tool available in the menu. Click the run, you'll get the plot in the plot window. Now, the same thing. Suppose if you would like to change the color of the plot, so you can make use of this COL parameter. So you can set any type of color here. If you are setting as blue, you'll be getting blue. Here I have mentioned the type of C. So C is a combination of point and line. That's why you're getting both of them together here. Next, if the type is H, so along with that uh, plot, I'll be getting histogram-like thing. So that is the type. Next, if you'd like to get some staircase like thing in the plot, then you have to give the type as yes. So other thing is PCH attribute, already I've told about it. So PCH is nothing but plot character. So in the plot, instead of line or uh, point, if I would like to get some other thing, I have to give the PCH value. So the PCH value ranges from zero to 25. Suppose, for example, here I have given as 11. If I give us 11, instead of that point, you'll be getting stars. So you'll be able to get different characters even for plotting. Next comes the line graph. So already we know line graph is nothing but it connects series of points. So generally line graphs are used in identifying the trends in data. So what's the trend earlier and what's the trend now? What's the current trend to know about it? Generally people prefer this line chart. So now let us see how this plot function is used to create the line chart. So in the type, simply put L. If you put L, you'll get the line chart. It's the same plot function. When I then give this type L, it will be considering it a scatter plot. If I give the type as L, it will be considering it as line plot. Next, suppose if I would like to increase the line width. Suppose if I think the line is too thin and I would like to increase the uh, width. So use the attribute LWD. That is equal to, suppose here if I'm uh, giving a six, it will be thicken. And if you would like to still uh, thicken it, you can increase the value here. Like that you can increase the width of the line graph. So here you can uh, increase the width of the line using LWD. And even you can change the type of line too. The type of the line in the line graph can be changed by using LTY attribute. This LTY attribute will take the values from 0 to 6. So based on the 0 to 6 values, here see, I have given us 3. So I'm getting some hyphen like 10. So based on this, the line type value will be changed. 
Next, we'll see about overlaying plots. Sometimes when we uh, display the plots, when we analyze, when and when we see the, uh, when we would like to uh, show the report to others, we would like to place one graph over the other. We would like to overlay the plots. So in that case, what we have to do is we have to go for plot function followed by lines function. So first, I have created a sequence. And normally, I've created a plot. So that is the uh, plot of type L. And uh, next, what I'm so this is a sine curve. Next, I would like to create a cos curve. I would like to have both the line curve and the cos curve in the same window, in the same graph, not in the same window, in the same graph itself. That's why we are going for overlaying graphs. So in that case, what I have to do is first write the plot function, then followed by that. So here specify the uh, parameters for the first uh, curve, first plot, and then include lines. Here you specify the arguments for the second plot. Here you can give any values here too. So after this, when you execute, you'll be able to get both the curves together in a single window, it's a single graph itself. Now, if you'd like to add legend to the graph, as you're having two lines, so I would like to show which is sine x curve and which is cos x curve. In that case, we'll go for legend. And I, want, I can specify where my legend should come. So if I would like to get it in the left top, I can specify it as left top. Right top means I can specify right top. It depends. And next, it's a small vector. Here I have to specify what should come in this uh, for this legend value. So for the first, what should be the value? Sin x. So that should be given as the first vector value. And what should come as the second value? Should come as the second vector value. Next, I have to give what color should be filled here. See, the first color is blue, second color is red. So I would like to mention create a vector. And uh, I should assign it to fill attributes. So fill equal to C of blue, comma, red. So blue will be assigned to the first legend and red will be assigned to the second legend next we'll see about the pie chart so pie chart is a representation of values a slices of circle as we all know and we are familiar with let us see how to create a pie chart in r pi is the function that is used to create the pie chart so pie chart will take a vector as the argument and it should be numeric and then you can have labels. Labels can be of any type. It, you can have any description for labeling the file. Next. Sophia, I'm sorry for the interruption. Can you switch off your video and continue with your presentation? OK, OK, OK. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Is it visible now, Hema? Yes, ma'am. Yes. We can see okay. your screen. OK, OK. So now, uh, next, you can specify the radius of the pie chart. Then here, too, you can use the main uh, color, everything. And finally, there is another option, clockwise. So when you draw the pie chart, whether it should be marked clockwise or anti-clockwise. So all these things can be given. So let us see an example. So first, I'm creating a vector. And then I'm creating another vector for labeling. So first is the actual value that I would like to represent in the graph. So I'm using pi function. Pi function first takes the first argument. That is the value that I should have to display. Next one is the label for the pi. And then I, uh, I would like to specify. If I didn't specify this, it will draw anti-clockwise. Because first, London, if it comes here, New York will come here. So instead of this, if I would like to have clockwise, I have to set it true. So after this, when I uh, execute, I'll be getting a pie chart with the data being specified in the pie and the label being marked outside. Next, if I would like to save the uh, chart through coding, I have to use the PNG function. So in the PNG function, you have to give the file name as argument. 
So already I told you, even in the window, you can click and you can save it. Or in the command, in the coding, if you'd like to give, use the PNG command. File equal to, you can give the uh, file name. So your chart will be saved in this file name. And after that, don't forget to clear it. Okay. DEV dot off should be done. The voice should be off. And then only you'll be able to close the file. Next, let us see another one. So here you're creating a pipe with different colors. So instead of the predefined colors, if you would like to specify my own color, so what it does, you create a vector for that. You know, five values are there. So you specify five colors in the vector that you are creating. Assign that vector to COL. So based on your wish, you'll be able to color your plot. And you can specify your border too. Next, if I, I can make use of the existing color palettes. So many color palettes are available in R. Rainbow is one of the color palettes. So how I can make use of this rainbow color palette? COL is equal to rainbow of length of x. x is our vector that we have created. So length of x will specify how many elements are there. So four elements are there. So it will take four rainbow colors from that. Okay, and based on that, it will color it up. Okay, that's how we will get. Next, some more information. That is, uh, uh, even you can have your legend in the pie chart. So how to add it. And similarly, how we prefer, instead of labeling, sometimes you want the percentage of information to be displayed for the description of the pie chart. So in that case, how to do? So first, calculate the percentage like this. So for the x vector, calculate the percentage like this. And then draw the pie chart. So when you draw the pie chart, instead of giving this label, what you have to give is the percentage value that you have calculated should be assigned for the labels. And then for the legend, I'm going to use these captions, housing, food, clothes, and all. So how to use it in the legend? Legend. Legend should write, come in the top right. And then these labels. So these labels is nothing but the uh, vector that I created. And next one is CX value. This will tell how far my legend should be scaled. Here I have given a 0 0.8. If you give more than 1, 1 1.2 or 1.3, it will be enlarged. So the uh, it will specify how far the legend should be scaled. Next one is fill. Fill will specify how the legend should be filled. Okay, so here we are using rainbow colors. So based on that, it will be assigned to that fill. Next, if you would like to create a 3D pie chart. So for uh, creating 3D pie chart, you have to use pi3d function, which is available in the Plotrix package. So first you have to install the Plotrix package. So how to install? Already I've seen in the previous session, you can use any one of the method. And then you have to include it in your co uh, program, and then you can start working. So same vectors you have, you have created, and then you have created the pi 3D. So uh, in this, what I mean, uh, I would like to do is I would like to explore. I have added one more attribute, explore. So I would like to explore the each uh, uh, separately part of that pie chart separately. Say. So to what extent I should explode, I can give like this, 0 0.1. So if I give increase the values, it will be exploded more. So like that, I can create the 3D pie chart. Next comes the bar chart. So already we are familiar with the bar chart. We know what is a bar chart. So it, they are rectangular bars that are created, uh, which is proportional to the value of the variable. So here, you can be able to create vertical bars as well as horizontal bars. So generally, by default, vertical bars will be created. And if you would like to create horizontal bars, you have to set horizontal as true. And a bar plot function is the function that is used to create the bar chart. So this is the syntax of bar plot. So you have to specify the vector. Then you have to specify the labels. Then you can have the title. And this is very, very important, names.arg. This is a vector that will appear under each bar uh, in the x-axis. And then you can color the graph too. So if I didn't use any coloring or any other attribute, simply I'm creating a vector. I'm assigning it to a variable h. Just I'm calling bar plot with that h save. So I'll get a bar plot like this. So for 7, first bar. Next 12, 28, like that it goes on. 
Now, to make it more appealing, what we can do is I'm creating first vector for the values, second vector to be the uh, names that should be displayed below each bar. So already I told you that should come as an uh, uh, as the value for names.arg. So you have to assign that vector to names.arg. So first you have to specify the values as the argument. Second, you have to specify what are all the names that should come for the e each bar. Then you have to specify the label for x-axis and the y-axis. And then you can give the title, then you can give the coloring, everything, border, color, everything. So that you'll get the chart like this. Next, an interesting chart that is stacked bar chart. Stack, you already know. So it will come one after the other. So we'll be having the first values down and then above that we'll be putting the other things. So here, how to create this stacked bar chart. So first, we have to mention what are the colors that should come in the stacked bar. So here, I would like to have green, orange, and brown. So that's why I've created like this first. And uh, you have to create a vector for that. Then I've created another vector to specify the names. What should come as the names for each bar? Then here, I have created so what each color refers to. So for one color refers to Wegener, another one Swift, another one also say. Now how to create values for that. Already in the second session, we have seen how to create a vector and then how to create a matrix out of that. So here I'm going to, so if you'd like to work with stack bar chart, you have to create a matrix. So you have to specify how many rows are there and how many columns. So three rows are there and five columns are there. So three rows means, so five columns. So first row will take the values two, nine, three, eleven, nine. So 2, 9, 3, 11, 9 will be marked for the first value. See, here this green refers to 2, this green refers to 9, then 3, 11, 9. Next, for the second row, 4, 8, 7, 3, 12. So 4, 8, 7, 3, 12. So like that, the values will be stacked over the other. So for that purpose, we are creating this matrix and we are assigning to values. Now how to create the bar plot? First, you are assigning values. That is, the matrix should be assigned as the argument, first argument. And uh, another one, important one, names.arg should be months. That is, what should come as a name for each bar that should be given here. And all the other things are the same that we have seen already. So when you execute this code, you'll be able to get the stacked bar chart. Next comes bar plot. So the main purpose of box plot is to show how the distribution of data is. So generally, the box plot deals with these data, minimum value, maximum value, and three quartiles values. So first quartile will be Q1. It tells about 25th percentile. And second quartile will be median. That tells about 50th percentile. And seventh, uh, Q3 tells about 75th percentile. And suppose if there is already, uh, Shepriyam, I'm told, if there is any outlier, box plot will clearly tell where the outlier is whether it is above the maximum or below the maximum. So how to create a box plot? Box plot can be created with the help of box plot function. So all the other things are the same. So it takes first x is a vector. And second one, data, that is the data frame. And if you'd like to have the a box plot in a notch form, you can specify notch equal to true. First, let us create a simple box plot. First, I'm here I'm going to use an existing data set. So for example, empty cars, it was already used. From that, I am taking two columns. So all the rows, that's why first argument has not been specified, but only these two columns. So I'm creating a vector for that. And that was taken as input. Next, how to create a box plot out of it. Here, what does MPG tell CYL? It tells us, it tells the relationship between the data. So first one will be the dependent data and second argument will be the independent data. So first column will be considered to be your independent data and second column will be considered to be, sorry, first column will be considered to be your dependent data and second column will be considered to be your independent data. So you are going to say how these two are uh, distributed over the uh, data. Now second argument it will tell what your vector is. So you have created, so here specifically we have created a data frame because box plot, it will take data frame as a second argument. So you are getting uh, two columns together. It's not a single dimensional array. If it is a vector, it should be one D array. So you are taking a data frame with two columns. 
Next, all the other things are the same. So when you execute this code, you'll be able to get a box plot like this, where it will specify the minimum value, maximum value, median value, and the other uh, Q1, Q2 values. So how it has specified based on the cylinders with respect to MPG. MPG here refers to miles per gallon, and CYL, it refers to number of cylinders. So with respect to cylinders, uh, sorry, number of cylinders with respect to miles per gallon, how the data is being distributed has been shown with the help of box plot. If you would like to color it, just give, use a color vector, that's all, as an argument. And simply, if you would like to use, uh, get it in the form of a notch, put notch equal to true, that's all, in the box plot, box plot function, you'll get a uh, notch. Next, finally, it's histogram. Histogram represents the frequencies of values in bucketed, uh, which are bucketed into ranges. It's just, it's like a bar chart, but the difference is here, it will be dealing with the distribution. Histogram tells about the distribution, but there, uh, bar chart, that is used for comparing different entities. Now, this is the syntax for histogram. Here, you have to first specify the vector, then all the other things are the same. Here, let us see a simple histogram. Create a simple histogram. First, create a vector, and you are assigning it to V. Next, for the histogram, you are passing the vector as argument, and then you are labeling. When you execute this code, it will create a histogram according to the distribution of values. For example, 0 to, sorry, 10 to 20, how many values are there? That will be marked in the first bar. 20 to 30, how many values are there in the vector? That will be marked next. See, 40 to 50, there, uh, no val there is no value in vector in the range 40 to 50. So there is no bar there. Like this, the histogram will be generated. So here, sometimes if you feel the limit of that bar chart or the histogram is not enough, I would like to have more, include ylim. So even ylim should be a vector. So what should be the first value and what should be the last value? So if it's supposed to be 0 to 6, the y-axis limit will be extended from 0 to 6. You can use it for x-axis too. x lim equal to a vector. So in that way, x-axis values can also be extended. So uh, this is a type of histogram, kernel density plot. So if you'd like to smoothen the curve, same histogram, but if you'd like to smoothen it, you can go for kernel density plot. So how to do it? That can be done with the help of plot function. You have a vector. Then plot of density of V will give you a kernel density plot. Here, you are given some uh, bandwidth value. This bandwidth value tells how it has been smoothed. To what extent the values are closer for smoothening. That will be specified by this bandwidth value. So this is how you can create a kernel density plot for the histogram too. Suppose while displaying, I would like to display more than one plot in the window. So how it can be done? That can be done with the help of par, par, par function. So what is a par function? It takes an argument like this, m, f, rho. So what should be mentioned in m, f, rho? A vector should be specified to tell how many rows and how many columns should be there in the single window. I would like to display two chart in a single row. So one row two columns for displaying two charts. So I have to say par of mf row equal to c of 1 comma 2. Then I'm creating a vector and then I'm plotting. How it will be displayed? So first plot will be displayed in 1 comma 1 position, first row, first column. And second plot will be displayed in first row, second column. That is this position. Suppose if I would like to have the first uh, plot here and the second plot below that uh, first sign function above and cosine function below that sign function say I have to mention it as 2 comma 1 2 rows 1 column so that in the first row first column sign function will be displayed second row first column cosine function will be displayed so more multiple plots I can display any number of plots even I can have 2 cross 2 1 cross 5 any number number of rows and number of columns matters so you will be able to display any number of, so each one will be considered to be subplots. Any number of subplots can be displayed in a single window. That's possible. Finally, so how to work with the uh, data set? That is standard data set that is available 
in or so let me ex explain few examples how to plot scatter plot with my existing data set so the data set that i've chosen so i would like to know what all the data sets available so what you do is in library give this as argument help equal to data sets when you enter it will list out what all the data sets available so from that you'll be you can choose anything i have chosen women data set which mentions specifies average heights and weights for american women so actually this is the data set we'll be able to see it in the edit window now if you, uh, so for convenience i have assigned this to w now i'm plotting so from w that is women data set i'm taking height column so this is how you have to take w then dollar height so i'm taking the height values and then i'm taking the weight values that is the next value this is the x value this is y value when i plot i'll get a scatter plot like this and similarly to get a histogram so i'm applying histogram on chick weight data set so chick weight is nothing but weight versus age of chicks on different diets so this was available and so what i'm doing I, i'm assigning it to a variable now from this i would like to take only one vector that is weight alone i would like to put, i would like to put it in a histogram so cw equal to chick weight so from this uh, i'm getting uh, sorry i'm assigning uh, this chick weight to a variable now in the hist function i am passing that cw and not all columns only weight column so cw dollar weight so hist function will draw a histogram for this weight alone so this is the output i'll be getting so i'm giving a, a label and even if i would like to head, uh, give the title for the plot i can give so all the other things i can do so only this thing matters so you can specify what column you need finally grouped bar plot so i would like to uh, use empty cast data set motor trend car road tests that is available in r and here what i'm going to do is i'm going to take a table for it what is a table it creates a frequency of the values that has been available so for example here from the data set i'm going to consider only two columns cylinder column and gear column see cylinder column is here gear column is here i'm going to uh, make a plot based on these two columns first i'm going to get a frequency of those values based on that i'll be plotting so i'm applying table function to get the frequency of these values and i'm going to assign it to count so a frequency in the sense so how many cylinders for example 6 for 6 how many gears are there uh, with 4 how many how many gears are there with 3 how many gears are there with 2 uh, uh, like that it presents on so like that it will calculate the frequency and it will be assigning it in the form of a table in counts now in the bar plot when i pass counts as argument and here all the other things are same when i plot i'll be able to get the car distribution by gears and cylinder like this so how we distribute c so how i am distributing so i am distributing with respect to cylinder and gear so the cylinder will come in the uh, sorry uh, cylinder will be coming in the uh, uh, number of cylinders will be coming in the y axis and number of gears will be coming in the x axis so gears values are 3 4 5 so what this blue tells so number of cylinders Sophia, I'm sorry for the interruption. To... The time is one forty-seven. I think you have to run fast. Okay, that's all, Hema. I'll wind it up now. Okay, so, okay, Mom. Okay. What this blue color bar tells us that number of cylinders with respect to the gear three. So number of gear uh, cylinders that belongs to four with respect to the gear three will be displayed here. Red tells a uh, number of cylinders. with respect to, uh, that belongs to category 6 with respect to the gear 3 will be displayed like this will be able to group the uh, bars based on the frequencies so i would like to uh, conclude by saying that you are given enough data you are having enough data and uh, day by day we are getting enough data so it's very easy to represent everything visually with the help of basic plots and besides that we have so many packages available in r to help us in plotting thank you 
thank you thank you sofia ma'am i think participants it is uh, uh, very late for all of us thank you for waiting patiently and listening to all our resource persons now it's time for us to wind up